Так. So welcome to the StreamZ community call for 18th November. And the recording is on. So let's start with the usual question and issues. Does anyone have anything new what's not on the agenda we want to raise? Hearing nothing, so I guess there's nothing. So we have quite a lot of proposals. Uh, so maybe this time we should start with the proposals and not with the PRs. The first one, the oldest one is the one uh, for the for the custom uh, authentication. In on the on the server side on the broker, uh, so I think for me that now looks more or less uh, good. Uh, so I approved it. It describes what needs to be configurable, what doesn't need to be configurable. I think like there might be something we run into while working on the PR, but yeah, I guess we should clarify that then. So. Uh, yeah, I guess other maintainers, uh, you should review it as well. Yeah, it's on my to-do list. I have to review it again, so I, I will do. I took a quick look at this last night and uh, I've not got any sort of technical feedback. So I'll take another pass, but I think it's probably good. I do wonder, um, it, it does sort of push us in a a direction that we sort of uh, haven't really gone this far in with the, in the past. I think in the you know we're sort of um, expecting people to build their own images with these configurable bits in, but I think that's kind of inevitable uh, given where we are. Yeah, I think it's not that easy, not that hard because they don't have to build the whole project per se, right? They can just write their own Docker file, which starts from the streams of images and uh, and adds what they need. Yeah, that's true. Um, but then they, yeah, that is true. But it will end up um, having other impacts on the project, I guess, in terms of, you know, sort of, their images are now dependent on our images and our release cycle and so on, which might not be convenient for people wanting to use this, but it is what it is. I mean, they can always use our build process to build their own base images or whatever, so. Yeah. Okay, anything more to this proposal? In that case, uh, maybe the next one we can have a look is the 43 proposal, which is about the service binding. So Kate, you are here, so maybe you can give us update on the last state. Yes, so... Um... We've had a few different comments going back and forth. I think the proposal is now in a state where everyone kind of agrees that the four approaches are fairly well defined. The question is what approach we want to go with. My general impression from the comments was that quite a few people seem to think that the fourth approach um, was perhaps the best. Uh, do you want me to summarise what the four approaches are for anyone who hasn't read the proposal? Yeah, maybe if you can do it with just a few sentences or something like that. Yeah, so basically they range from using what we've already got to sort of fully creating new things to work with service binding. So the service binding operator is expecting a single secret that it can read to have all of the 
information and mount that onto an application. But if you create multiple service bindings, you can then mount multiple secrets. So the first option is just to only use the Kafka user that we have already. We would need to tweak it slightly to tell service binding where to look, but we could just mount that. But that leaves quite a lot of work up to the user. And then the other stages kind of two and three go through updating the Kafka um, user to have the listeners because then all of the information would be in one place but that's kind of using Kafka user for something maybe it wasn't intended for we could then update the Kafka resource to have a single status field but that still means that you're having to mount two different things which seems a bit strange so the full way to go and probably the way that in my opinion works best with service binding is to have a new type which would be a Kafka connection type where you basically define this is a Kafka connection, it's using this cluster, it's using this Kafka user, if there is one. And that would allow us to then create a single secret with all of the information for someone to use that Kafka connection. And I, in my opinion, I feel like that is the best approach because the current resources that Strimzy have is very much from the point of view of the person maintaining the Kafka and and how they want to manage it. Whereas service binding is looking for a resource to bind to that is just, here's my service that's easily accessible. Um, but obviously the final approach means we're adding a new Kafka custom, a Strimzy custom resource. It's kind of more work. Would it be confusing for people to have more than one? So I think there's definitely, I've sort of listed pros and cons in the proposal of each. Um, Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. All right, I managed to mute for most of that coughing fit. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I had a look at this last night, and I think this has been a, a great proposal to do. And I think uh, option four definitely sounds the best. Yeah, from my comment on the on the on the proposal, it's clear that uh, I agree that uh, having a new custom resource is the right way to go, so. Yeah, I think the the separate resource give us a chance to make things work across clusters, across namespaces or even across clusters uh, without necessarily needing to do that in the user operator. So, yeah, I think I don't necessarily think the other options are are bad, but I think our current biggest issue is that the user operator operates only on uh, on one namespace, mm -hmm. and unless we want to change that anytime soon, then basically, yeah, I'm not sure there's much value in the service binding support without being able to use that in the different namespaces because that seems to be what the users really want for deploying their applications so yeah. my view is that either we would need to plan to implement that for the user operator relatively soon and then we can consider them or if we use the Kafka connection thing as the option to go, then that basically separates it from that. And we do not really care anymore whether it lives in the same namespace, in different namespace, because we can just have the operator handling the Kafka connection work across namespaces. So I think it works for me as, as well uh, as the best option. Mm -hmm. Based on chatting to some of the people in the service binding space, I think there are one or two operators, I know of at least one, I don't know about the others, that do support cross namespace, but it's not something they've put in the spec. So there's no guarantee that service binding operators would support it. And I think, like you say, in some ways, using the Kafka connection option would mean that we're allowing people to do cross namespace easily, whether they're using service binding or not, even if they're just doing it themselves around sort of mounting the secret and things like that, um, it would still give them a really good option, so. 
and it, based on, so I don't think there's anyone um, here from service finding, but um, one of the um, spec contributors did comment on a few of the pieces and um, he seemed to agree that the fourth one fit well with um, their sort of point of view and how they expect things to work. So um, it sounds like they think that's sensible as well. Just a couple of uh, really minor points from me, so I'm totally fine with the with the proposal. Uh, just a couple of minor points. Uh, maybe uh, we can think uh, a little bit more, or I will think a little bit more about the 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 names for the fields related to the certificates, uh, because we want to yeah we want to propose to the binding team the the same right, Kate, uh, more or less. Yeah, and on the other side, uh, so let's think just a little bit more if they are really okay or we want to change these names. And uh, on the other side, uh, but it's a really mi minor point, the name about Kafka connection. I was just thinking that maybe, I don't know, people can be uh, confused with the, the others that we have, the Kafka connector. They are different, of course, Kafka connection, Kafka connector, but I, I don't know if it can make any confusion to people. And uh, if we can think of a different name, uh, even if uh, using binding in the, so something like Kafka, I don't know, binding or things like that, maybe it's not right because this custom resource is for the service binding, but in general is useful as a resource where you can find all the information for connection. So yeah, j just mm, let's give a little bit of time on thinking at, on, on the name if it's really confusing for people. Or, or it's okay, but it's really just a minor point to me. Do you want me to go ahead and update the proposal so that option four is the option? I'll put the other ones as like um, considered but not going with, and then sounds um, good. Yeah. We can yeah from there kind of agree the final version before it gets merged. Yeah, before we get there, does anyone else have any opinions about the option which we should take? Okay, it doesn't sound like it. Yeah, so I guess it might be best to update the proposal and move those other options into the rejected alternatives. I think we usually have it there. Yeah, I'll add a section. Okay, anything else to this proposal? Okay, then I guess the next proposal we can get to is the 42 about the authentication this time on the client side. So this would be this one, 42. And I guess the core of the discussion which we had on the PR was about whether we should have a specific API for the Azure authentication mechanism or whether it should be as a, as a custom, uh, just as a custom client authentication where everyone configures the fields more or less freely. So I guess that's what we should discuss here. So where do we want to start with that? Um, so basically, uh, first of all, I just wanted to uh, give a short uh, background of uh, how we uh, start looking into Streamz because I'm not sure that everyone are familiar. Uh, but me and Shir, uh, my manager that is also here on the um, uh, meeting, uh, we both work for Microsoft for a solution uh, for cloud app, cloud application, a security solution. And we were looking for a mirror, uh, mirror solution for our event hubs. And we did uh, two POCs, one with Mirror Maker 1 and one with Mirror Maker 2. 
uh, using Streamsy and they both were successful. Uh, however, our security requirements demand for zero secret authentication, uh, which can be done uh, by implement implementing the OAuth uh, authentication callback handler of Kafka. Uh, we already done this in other components in our systems. And actually, we are looking for a way to just uh, uh, have some extension point for uh, integrating our jar uh, consist, cons that consists that implementation. And I think our uh, two approaches that I saw that uh, were more uh, supported were one uh, using any container uh, to uh, integrate that jar. And the other one is just extending uh, Streamsy's uh, image. Sorry for the noise. Um, but in order to understand if these uh, approaches are possible uh, for us, uh, like the agenda for this meeting is understanding if you have some mechanism of loading uh, external jars in Streamsy, uh, because if the answer is yes, this is supposed to be a uh, pretty easy, a part of making a few uh, configurations confer configurable, uh, which I think I mentioned them in the proposal. Um, we only need either using init container, extending the image, we only need uh, to put the jar in the right path. And uh, that's about it, I think. So I think the mechanism which we have for extending the images is that leaving aside the Kafka Connect, which is kind of a, its own way how to add the connectors, which is something slightly different. You basically can build, so when you install the operator, you configure mm -hmm. all okay. the different images it, uh, it can use. And uh, in, uh, uh, so you can tell the operator to use your own image and that's uh, that's useful both when you want to use some private registries for example which is quite common with users who either don't want to or cannot for security reason just pull from uh, from uh, our quay registry uh, and they want to use something of their own but it's also useful for customization. So basically anyone can uh, customize the image either by modifying the, the Streamsy sources where the original images are built and building their own. Or as mentioned with the other proposal, you can also just basically write your Docker file or whatever way you want to build the Docker image. And you can just mm -hmm. say from quay.io slash Streamsy slash uh, Kafka and use the tag and then you can basically just add the jars which you want uh, and you can so basically build the container. So you have a cl class loader for uh, external jars? I mean, how is this jar? Uh, I mean, so how you, will it you, be loaded? You would basically just add it to the to the lips directory uh, mm -hmm. of the of the Kafka uh, project. So yes. in the in the Streamsy container image, there's the there's the the standard Kafka binaries, uh, and they have the libs folder where all the different jars with the dependencies are, mm -hmm. and you can really just edit uh, edit there. Okay, and so uh, yeah, this this uh, sounds good enough for us. Um, so basically our proposal, like the only thing we will need from you is I think making a few of the configurations uh, that from what I saw in the code aren't co configurable at, at the moment. For example, the OAuth callback uh, class. Um, yeah. So I, th I think this will be our only uh, requirement for from our proposal uh, by the way the idea with the init container uh, and the shared volume it has an advantage for i mean uh, your uh, your solution because uh, then it can be uh, like everyone that wants to implement their own uh, uh, have their own implementation for that class or for any class can use can pack their jar in their own image and uh, that init container will just pass 
uh, the jar from one place to the uh, right correct path and uh, then it will be like an extension point for everyone um so uh, that's just uh, another another way to do that that can be useful for also other other people but uh it's uh, your decision. We're we're fine with both uh, with both solutions. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of a separate discussion about the init container. Mm -hmm. uh, the disadvantage is that, to be honest, people get different ideas what they can do with this. Like, uh, let's replace it with different Kafka version and so on. And, yeah, but then uh, it's, uh, it's their own responsibility, right? Because they... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't necessarily stop them from opening Asking issues questions. and coming to okay. Slack and yes. causing confusion and so on. So mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, my personal view is that, yes, it might be a bit easier to do it uh, this way. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure it's really it's really the right way and worth it but maybe that's a separate discussion to some extent mm -hmm. so, yeah sure so okay so if you are fine with even with the current way out at the jar then would more or less the custom authentication mechanism which lets you just specify the different fields would that yeah. be okay for you yeah i i hope i didn't i mentioned i mentioned in my proposal i think all the configurations that aren't configurable in the moment and they need to be configurable i hope i didn't miss anything uh, but yeah basically this uh, if you can uh, define it if the image is already configurable this would be the only thing we need from from your side Tom, I think you were the one who commented on the proposal uh, that having the API specific to this would be better. So do you have any opinions? Um, so I think my reasoning is or, or was that if, if this jar was built into the Strimzy images, then it, I think you you end up with a better user experience in terms of being able to uh, validate things and have a nice schema uh, CR schema for this if you've you've got something which is specific. But it sounds like we're going in the direction of this being um, added uh, on top of the Strimzy image, and therefore. Um, it, you know, it wouldn't make sense to have in our schema the ability to configure stuff, but not for the relevant jar file to be present in the Strimzy images. So um, if that's the way we're going to do things, then I don't think having something specific is the right thing to do in the schema, I mean. Okay, so <clears throat> looking at the proposal, uh, I think we are still missing some kind of API, how the API for the custom authentication will look like. Uh, is that something uh, you want to look into and update it? Or would you be rather if someone from our team takes it over and updates it with it? Uh, what do you exactly mean by the API, like the implementation like, of the... Like, like how would basically, so, so to be able to configure these different fields, you would mm -hmm. need to be able to have some support for it in the, in the custom resources. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I mean with the API kind of having some example how it will look uh, like there and uh, how the user will actually configure these options because the mm -hmm. way these things are constructed from the from the API, uh, you will not be able easily to kind of pass these options in the in the config section. 
it would need it's, to be as a custom authentication uh, type in the in the API in the in the custom resource. I'm not totally familiar with the custom resources. Isn't it just configurable from the uh, I mean from the YAML of the uh, Mirror Maker? Uh, these configurations. Yeah, Exactly. The API is basically what you configure in the in the YAML of the of the configuration, but you mm -hmm. can't configure there anything you want. Everything. You basically need to add yeah. support for the for the structure and so on. So I think that's the part which is missing in there to have the have the structure. To, uh, oh, to like uh, example of that uh, of that yeah, YAML. Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. No problem. I guess that uh, it can be useful to take a look at uh, the other proposal, the one for the custom aut authentication to get some ideas of uh, yeah, what we mean as uh, adding the support in a custom resource from an API point of view. So that yeah, you can have an idea what it's going to be configured and what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And yeah, if you take a about... look at the, sorry, Paolo, go on. No, no, I was just saying, I'm talking about the proposal number 41. So if you take a look at that, you, yeah. yeah. You can get more more insight on what is needed to do. Mm -hmm. I was just going to okay, say, if sure. you look at the um, API module, you'll see the Java source code for the uh, the Java POJOs, which get mapped from the uh, the YAML, and there's annotations on those. And from those annotations, we derive the CRD schema, which is how you can then write your YAML. And it be validated okay. by um, the Kubernetes API server. So if you have a look at that, hopefully it'll click. And uh, yeah. Sure. I think uh, basically it will be very similar. If I remember correctly, uh, we were missing only one configuration. And the other configurations are either by default what we need or they are already configurable. Um, if I remember correctly, but uh, I, I can look into it again. Yeah, I think I think there will be some more some more details, like mm -hmm. uh, this security protocol, for example. Uh, that's there's separate TLS section which configures the TLS encryption when connecting to the to the server. So okay. you, for example, you cannot add this in the API just as a security protocol field where the user specifies it. Uh, mm -hmm. It would probably be needed to kind of have, for example, in the custom authentication, just some flag saying whether it's SUSL or not SUSL. And then mm -hmm. basically inside the operator, it needs to be combined the, the SUSL part and the SSL part from the different, uh, different sections. And uh, then I think the SUSL mechanism, that's, that's really just one field which is added there. So is the JAS config and the callbacks and so on. So I think the rest should be very right. easy. Uh, yeah, I I don't know if you are on the on the Streamzy Streamzy Slack, but yeah, if you would need some help with it, then the easiest way might be to ping one of us uh, on there. Okay, great. Or or I mean, if you are, if you are not I there, we can didn't... work on the PR as well. But uh, yeah, uh, that actually sounds like a good uh, good option. Working from Slack. Um... I believe it doesn't sound too complicated, but it will be a great, it's great to have a channel in case uh, uh, we need help. So uh, how do you join uh, this, uh, so this uh, channel? If you go to the, I can't really show it because uh, I'm already joined, but if you would go to slack.cncf.io, I think, then uh, it will basically give you, oh, I'm a different browser. So yeah, it will basically let you join the, uh, join the CNCF Cloud Native Computing Foundation Slack workspace. Mm -hmm. And if, once you join there, then there's a channel called Streamzy uh, yes. or, or Streamzy, uh, Streamzy Dev, which you can use, but mm -hmm. like, feel free to, Ping me or someone else uh, as uh, with DM as well. That, that's fine since since we talked about this anyway here already. So yes, okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much, guys, for your time and reviewing our proposal. Um, 
So uh, basically, well, I hope we'll update uh, um, the proposal in the coming days uh, with the details you required. And uh, like you said, if we'll need any help, we'll uh, approach you from that uh, Slack channel. Okay, I have like a quick one. question about the, the jars that the class path will load. Uh, do we need to take care of uh, shadowing and uh, relocating to avoid a dependency collision? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, so the, the third party jars mechanism that we've got as part of the Strimsy build process does have a, a check for whether two different um, jars uh, have got the same class files in. Um, but obviously, if you're just using the Scrimsy images as uh, a base image, then you can't really make use of that. Um, so, yeah, that is a good point. So if we do like a shadow jar with relocation of the packages to avoid the dependencies, do you see a problem with that? that and no, that should work. Okay, so we'll take care of it. Okay, anything else to this? Now, just adding, uh, uh, still again, a minor point on the Slack discussion. Anyway, yeah, it's a good channel to get feedback, uh, of course, in real time and chatting with us. Uh, the only thing it's important that when some decision is made somehow, uh, let's report this uh, upstream in the proposal on, uh, on, yeah. on the PR. So yeah. it will be May documented. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that all the other people maybe sure. in different time zones can have a look and, uh, yeah, and check what are the decisions that we made on Slack. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Sure. Okay, I guess we can then move to the next proposal, which is mine about the stateful set removal. So there's a bunch of comments people left there, and I guess some of them uh, might be worth some more discussion. So. There was a lot of discussion about the name of the custom resource. So I originally named it uh, <clears throat> Kafka Node Set, but there seemed to be a lot of people saying something like Strimsy Node Set might be better. So uh, is that the way we want to go forward? Paolo, I think you were the, the one saying that uh, <laughs> Kafka Node Set is better. But I think everyone else was uh, with streams and old set. Yeah, I know. So I, I can just accept that. So uh, yeah, I was just because we have all our custom resource as prefixed by Kafka. But it's even true that this is not going to be a custom resource, which is handled by the user, uh, while all the others are handled by the user. But uh, even in this case, uh, uh, related to the Kate proposal about service binding, we are naming it as a Kafka connection, which is still Kafka there, even if it's not created by the user. So it's something that we are going to create as well, like the Kafka node set. So it was just because we are following this kind of path, but uh, yeah, we can, I, I can accept streams in set if for the others is better. Yeah, that was really my feeling why I named it originally Kafka Noted uh, as well. But yeah, to be honest, I'm not too fixed on that. So if the majority wants to have it as a Streams in Noted, I don't have a problem to rename it. Okay, so I guess it's Streams in Noted what we go with. It will be fun changing it everywhere. It's just for me, it's just that when I read StreamZ, I think about uh, the operator part of things, right? 
So in this case, we are talking about nodes related to the Kafka cluster. So not something really related. Well, it's really related to the operator in the sense that it's the operator creating the nodes and, and pods, but it's more something related to Kafka because the nodes are going to host the brokers. But it's but an yeah. implementation detail. That's why I think that sticking Kafka in there is just a bit sort of weird and confusing is, you know, this is kind of nothing to do with Kafka. It's just about how we're orchestrating the pods underneath. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And yeah. in principle, there could be other pods, you know, it just, it just happens that they're going to be Kafka broker pods. And, and you know, initially there's going to be some Zookeeper pods as well. But, you know, with KIP 500, eventually they'll disappear and they'll happen to all be, um, yeah, broker and controller pods. But, and, you know, that's just kind of, it's like I said, it's implementation detail. What's the reason for choosing the word node in the name rather than pod set, for example? Uh, I don't think there's any specific well thought through reason. Uh, I mean, the pods are really nodes of the of the cluster, right? So I think it can be both. If we want to call it pod set, then yeah, I think that's fine as well. It just occurred to me, I guess, Again, this is a resource that we're not expecting users to necessarily have to care about. But if I was a new developer on Strimzy and I saw something that was called either Kafka node set or Strimzy node set, I'd, it wouldn't be immediately obvious what the word node was referring to. I'd have to look at what it was managing, I think, a bit more to understand. Yeah, I quite like pod set, actually, because, it, again, it suggests it's a bit more of a Kubernetes concern than anything to do with Kafka. And therefore, again, sort of people are going to maybe uh, take from that that it is more of an implementation detail rather than something that they should directly be caring about. Yeah, I agree as well. I think that pod set is much better. It's incredible how naming is the most difficult part of engineering, right? Okay, so Strimzy pod set it is. Or does anyone have any other ideas? Okay, then I know Tom and Paul also asked for the feature gate to be named uh, differently. So yeah, I guess I will then rename it based on the new Strimzy pod set name as well then uh, yeah i think one other thing raised by tom there uh, was about so i mentioned there is one of the risks or limitations that the custom resource can fit only limited number of pots uh, and tom raised there how many can it actually fit and i don't think there's a definite answer because uh, yeah, when I create some simple zookeeper pods, then for example, they have four, four kilobytes uh, each pod. So with the one megabyte per resource, you can fit quite a, quite a lot, but there's no easy way how to say what's the maximum size, because for example, users can define your their own uh, affinity rules uh, and uh, and uh, tolerations and so on so in theory if they decide for whatever reason to create affinity rules to uh, avoid running it on the same node with a hundred different databases and then they use one rule for each then the pot will be definitely a lot bigger than uh, than the default but yeah, judging based on the zookeeper pods and the Kafka pod size, I guess we should fit in many cases or most cases below 10 kilobytes. So uh, yeah, that would mean that it can host 100 different uh, pods in one set. And then 
kind of the long-term idea which I imagine we might go after uh, after zookeeper removal is that we might go with these uh, pools also so that there might be actually not just one node set for the whole Kafka cluster but there might be uh, more node sets for each Kafka cluster so I don't think it necessarily long term defines the maximum limit of Kafka nodes uh, because there might be simply more of those for each Kafka cluster. But like right now, when we do the one to one replacement for stateful set, uh, uh, all to feature gated right now, of course, so the user can choose, then yeah, that would be really a limit for the number of Kafka nodes. So I guess, Tom, the question is, uh, is this just something to clarify on the proposal or do you think that's, uh, that's a blocker for it? I don't, I was just trying to um, get a feeling for how soon um, that might become an issue. And I think if, if we sort of back of the envelope calculation reckon we can get up to a uh, hundred pods in there, then I think that's, you know, it, it pushes it sufficiently far into the the future that I don't think that part of it's an issue. Yeah, I guess other way how to increase it would be to just zip the content, which uh, might not look so nicely if you have basically a custom resource <laughs> which has a binary blob inside. But in a way, since it's internal only, it's not necessarily something what's impossible to do, right? So that would be another option if we see that as a as a limit, which is a problem. And since all the pods have a lot of same structures, then I think in general it would compress quite well. But I guess, yeah, I, unless we really saw that as an issue today, I think we should. Uh, not go this ugly way to have some compressed data in it. Okay, and then I think the, the last point, Tom, which you mentioned, which uh, yeah, I wasn't completely clear with uh, the impact was uh, you raised there the question about the thread versus executor. So I don't know how much we want to discuss that and how much we want to say that the POC is using thread, so we stay with thread for the time being. Yeah, I think it's an implementation detail that doesn't really need to be part of the proposal in a way. Yeah, I don't think it's really mentioned in the proposal, but it's it's uh, in the accompanying POCPR for for Zookeeper, right? So so it's more more a parallel related work, I would say, not necessarily something directly in the proposal. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a strong feeling about it. Obviously, you've written it um the way you've written it and we can code review it and merge it like that um i don't think there are massive advantages to using an executor um it's just you know an executor could be used was kind of my uh my point really um and it does alleviate um a few sort of tricky things when it comes to you know sort of stopping um these things for example but there's, like I said, there's no compelling reasons to use one. Okay, then I guess for the time being, we can probably stick with what we have and see how it works and how easy it is to test and so on. Yeah, I mean, it probably wouldn't be a massive refactor if we did change our mind at a later date. Okay, does anyone have anything else to this proposal? 
I do, I think. Um, did we, how much, well, did we put any thought into how far we could go if we kept stateful sets, but configured some sort of logical mapping from pod ID to broker ID that they would consume when they started up. And whether that is would work would work for the use cases that we we have in mind for uh yeah the motivations we have in mind for this refactoring. I don't think that works Tom. Can you remind me why? The the storage template in the stateful set creates the volumes for the pods. And that's what yes. they use for their whole lifetime, right? Yes. So I'm sure you can yeah, develop yeah, yeah, some yeah. mapping which says that uh, the pod number with the index number zero is now ID 1001, and then change it to say that the pod with the ID zero is now not 1001 because maybe you deleted that broker, but that it's, uh, uh, yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. 2001, but it also, for example, inherits the storage of the yeah, yeah, old yeah. broker. Okay. So like, Th if fine. you would can... use that, you would delete the wrong storage and keep can we just add storage. this? Can we just add this as a rejected alternative then? Just so that next time the wrong thought pops into my head, I can remember why it's wrong. Okay. Thanks, Jakob. Anyone, anything else? If not, then we can have a look at the PRs. And yeah, there are some of them which I think are waiting for you mostly. That's the Kafka Logdump tool which to be honest, you are probably the one who has some idea what functionality you want to see in it since uh, the enhancement issue is really yours. So uh, yeah, I think you need to have a look at it to see whether it actually does what you want. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. And then, uh, Actually, I edit this on Tuesday. So this one looks already approved. So that can be probably merged. I don't know if you had some comments. No, it looks just approved. So that's done, that can be merged. Then, uh, what was this one? <laughs> Okay, so Standa says that this should be merged as well. So Standa, can you merge it or add the ready for merge label to it, please? Yes, I can merge it. Then what was this one? Yeah, so that's a system test PR, which looks to be dead for last week or so. So Jakub, maybe you know whether there's some progress on it or? I will reach Michael and I will ask him. Yeah, if he needs more time to work on it, then maybe he can change it to draft or something like that at least. Yeah, okay. And then the other one I noted was this one. 
Shubham, did you manage to make any progress uh, on it or are we just waiting for the Fabric 8 issue? Uh, I guess we were waiting for this Fabric 8 issue because uh, I guess we stopped uh, looking into it for that uh, reason itself. I guess Tom Bentley would be able to highlight more upon this, I guess. So the Fabricate issue, if implemented really, does what this PR is doing, right? So if you are waiting for it, should we just close this PR then? Yeah, I mean, it's not completely clear what, if anything, is going to happen in Fabricate as a result of that issue. There's been, you know, it's yeah it's a bit of a a vague conversation i think and i think there are the reasons for not there are potentially reasons for not doing anything in fabricate at least for the that existing api so um i don't know what we do with this issue i guess we can close it and maybe fabricate will do something and maybe we can use that um yeah i agree <clears throat> okay so uh shubham will you close it yeah sure Thanks. okay Uh, any other PRs anyone wants to discuss? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to like have some reviews from Tom Bentley and Paolo on the listener PR because I guess it's been a while since I'm trying the serializers and decide serializer stuff for getting one setter there. So yeah, I'm not able to make very, like not a good progress, I'm just able to remove the setter, but still it is dependent on the methods which were being generated so yeah that's this one right yeah yeah exactly yeah i will take uh, a look i will have another pass sorry for the delay shuban okay no problem Okay. Anyone, anything else? How did Google decided that Jakub ST might be Jakub Steiner and not Jakub Stasko? Okay, unless anyone has anything else, I guess we might be done right in time. Then uh, thanks for joining the call. Thanks, folks. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, thanks folks.